Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the T's study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. In addition to the sixth menu, uh, sixth edition, uh, as I as I point out in all the previous as I, as I pointed out in all the previous videos, beginning with day number 101, that we have already solved all the math problems that appeared in the fifth edition, the previous edition that I'm holding in my hand here, and you will find the solutions to all of those problems, all of the problems that appeared in this book, from day number one through eighty. Day number one through eighty. There are no videos day eighty one through one hundred. We begin a new series from day number one hundred one. Yesterday, we talked about how do we go about rounding fractions. If you are given a, a fraction and you're being asked to round it to the nearest unit digit, how does one go about achieving that? We're going to continue with that concept today by starting with you, uh, by, by doing few examples. I'm not going to explain everything in as much detail as I did yesterday. If you have not watched the previous video, day number 122 is important, it is imperative, it is critical that you do so. You must watch this series in proper sequence. Don't go all over willy-nilly. The concepts are done in a certain order. They must be learned in that order. Today is day number 123. Let's begin. We're being asked to round, we're being asked to round 3-8, round around 3-8 to the nearest unit digit or to the nearest ones digit. Well, what can we do here? Well, we learned yesterday that as long as the top, the numerator, is greater than or equal to half the bottom, we have to round up. We have to round up. In this case, we round up. That's the rule. As long as top is greater than or equal to half the bottom, we have to round it up. Well, here, is the top greater than or equal to half the bottom? The answer, of course, is no, because half of bottom would have been 4. 4 eight is 4 is half of bottom. This is 3 8. 3 8 is less than half. And since it's less than half, we have to round it down. Round down to what? Near, nearest unit digit to 3 8 is 0. Is 0. Again, as I said, watch the yesterday's video. What if instead of being 3 8, had it been, instead of being 3 8, had it been 5 8? Well, in that case, 5 8 is indeed greater than or equal to half. Of course, we know 5 is more than, 5 8 is more than half, but we have to say greater than or equal to. We have to say the equal to part. In this case, we have, we have to round it up. We have to round it up to what? Well, the nearest unit digit to 5 8 is 1. What if we had given, what if we had been given 4 8? Well, 4 8 is again greater than or equal to half, even though 4 8 is not greater than half, 4 8 is equal to, but equal to part is right here. As we said yesterday, this, this concept is same as what we encounter when we're dealing with numbers expressed in decimals. When they are expressed in decimals, the rule is exactly the same. As long as it is 0.5 or more, even if it's 0.5, we round it up. 7.8, as the 7.5 is rounded to 8, round it up to 8 when, you, when we're being asked to round it to the nearest unit digit. So 4.8 is again is going to round, we're going to round it up to 1. Let's do one more. Let's do something in mixed fractions. Something that is expressed in mixed fractions. How about 9 and 2 7? 9, 9 and 2 7. Well, 2 7, we know half of 7, we know half of 7 is 3 and a half. Half of 7 is 3 and a half, therefore 3 and a half over 7 is exactly half. We don't have 3 and a half on the top, we have 2. 2 7 is less than half. Since 2 7 is less than half, this quantity, whatever it is, is less than 7. But this quantity, whatever it is, is less than 9.5. Since it's less than 9.5, you don't have to think in terms of decimal. Learn to think in terms of fractions here. Since this is not 3.5, this is less than 3.5, you're going to round it down. Round down. Round down. Well, what do we round down to? What's the nearest 
unit digit to 9 and 2 7th? The answer is the nearest unit digit, the nearest ones digit to 9 and 2 7th is 9. Let's do one more. How about How about 23, 23 and 17th, 20th? Well, we can clearly see the 17th, 20th is more than half because half of 20 is 10. Since 17th, 20th is more than half, we're going to round it up, round it up to what? What's the nearest unit digit to 17 and uh, what is the nearest unit digit to 23, 23 and 17th, 20th? The answer is it is 24. The nearest unit digit is 24. Let's do one more. Ah, this is a tricky one. Let's do this. Let's erase this thing. This is a tricky one. We're being asked to round 92 over 7. We're being asked to round to the nearest unit digit. And the answer is. And, and the question, and, 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 and what we have to understand is, what, well, how do we go about it? How do we find out the nearest unit digit to 92 divided by 7? Well, first thing first, first thing we have to do is express this thing into mixed numbers. Let's do that, shall we? We're going to divide 92, we're going to divide 92 by 7. Stay with me in the story. It's very important that you stay with me in the story. How many 7s does 9 have? 9 has 1 7. 9 has 1 7. After we take away the 7 from the 9, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to that 2? That 2 is going to go and join this 2, becoming 22. And 22 has how many 7s? 22 has 3 7s. Three 7s three are 21. After we take away the 21 from the 22, we have a remainder of 1. And that remainder of 1 must be divided by what we were supposed to divide it by, which is 7. 7 is at the bottom here. So that 1 must be divided by 7. So the answer is 92 divided by 7 equals 17th and 1 7th. It equals to 17th and 1 7th. That's right, or rather 13. 13 and 1 7th. It is equal to, this is exactly equal to 13 and 1 7th. Since 1 is less than half of 7, it's going to be rounded down. Round down to the nearest unit digit to 13 and 17 is 13. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. How about 88 over 5? 88 over 5. Well, again, first thing first, we have to first figure out what this quantity is when expressed in mixed numbers. Let's find out, shall we? How many 5 does 8 have? 8 has 1 5. 8 only has 1 5. 4 8. After we take away the 5 from the 8, we have a remainder of 3. What happens to the 3? Well, that 3 is going to go, that 3 is going to go and join this 8, becoming 38. And 38 has how many 5s? 38 has 7 5s. Seven 5s five. Seven are 35. 7 5s are 35. After we take away 35 from the 38, we have a remainder of 3. We have a remainder of 3. And what do we do with the 3? Well, that 3 must be divided by what we are supposed to divide the whole quantity by, which is 5. It becomes 3 fifths. It becomes 3 fifths. And therefore this whole quantity, 88 over 5, is exactly equal to 17 and 3 fifths. And since 3 fifths is more than half, or to be more precise, more than or equal to half, because half of 5 is 2 and a half, 3 fifths is more than half, we're going to round it up. Round up. To, to what? What's the nearest unit digit to 17 and 3 fifth? The answer is 18. 88 over 5, when we, are, when we are being asked to round it to the nearest unit digit, becomes 18. Let's do one last one. Let's do one last one. Give me one brief second. How about you try it yourself? I'll pause the video and you do it yourself. 125 over 11. Go ahead, try it yourself, give it a shot, see what happens. Again, 
first thing first first thing first first we have to figure out what this quantity is when expressed in mixed numbers let's begin shall we how many 11s does one have how many 11s does one have well, one has no 11 one is too puny to have any 11s it's too tiny the poor guy is too tiny it has no 11s what does he do well he goes to his next door neighbor and says why don't we gang up I can't take on 11 by myself I'm too puny why don't we gang up and we become 12 he joins the two and becomes a 12 aha now we can take on this guy 12 has one 11 12 has one 11 after we take away 11 from the 12 we have a remainder of one what happens to that one that one goes and joins the 5 becoming 15 and 15 also has one 11 after we take away 11 from the 15 we have a remainder of 4 question is what happens to that 4 well that 4 must be divided by what we were supposed to divide the entire quantity by which was 11 so we were divided by 11 so it becomes 11 and 4 11 11 and 4 11 this quantity is equal to 11 and 4 11 4 11 and we know we know that half of 11 how much is half of 11 I don't know what half of 11 is I do know what half of 10 is half of 10 is 5 and therefore half of 11 should be 5 and a half half of 11 is 5 and a half in other words in other words, 5 and a half over 11 is exactly half. It's exactly half. Since we don't have 5 and a half on the top, we have only 4. Since top is less than half of the bottom, less than or equal to half the bottom, this quantity is less than. If we were to express this in decimal, it would have been, it, not it would have been, it is going to be less than 11.5. This is less than half. Therefore, 11 and 4 7 is going to be rounded down round down to what was the nearest unit digit to 11 and 4 11 the nearest unit digit to 11 and 4 11 is 11 this quantity is rounded down to 11 in other words 125 over 11 is rounded to 125 over 11 is simply rounded to 11 Which makes perfect sense because 11 11s are 121 after we take away 121 from 125 we'll have a remainder of 4 because 11 per 11 to 121 is a perfect square i hope you know your squares 1 through 20 and if you do not know these basic things it's about time that you learn them you're going to learn all of this thing in the first 80 videos even though we are working out of the sixth edition i'm not going to repeat all the things that we have already learned in the first 80 videos it is your job to watch make sure you watch all of those videos even if you don't have the book just watch the videos and follow the follow the problem on the blackboard day 1 through 80 there are a lot of concepts that we learned there I'm not going to keep repeating them do you understand you must know your squares you must know 11 square is 121 and since it's 125 obviously it makes sense that uh, 11 11s are 121 120 after we take away 121 from 125 we have a remainder of 4 125, 125 divided by 11 is simply 11 and 411 which is going to be rounded down to simply 11. By now, tomorrow we're going to talk, we're going to talk about the new concept, concept of ratios and proportions. Right? By now.